So iOS and iPadOS 16.2 Beta 4 just released to all developers to test out and to try out to see if there's any new features and also more performance enhancements. Now this is a Beta 4, so we're now on the fourth iteration of the Beta, which means whatever new features came out with 16.2, now Apple's just iterating on them and making sure that they're ready for the public release. So without further ado, let's see exactly what's new with iPadOS and iOS 16.2 Beta 4. Let's get into it. Okay, everybody, let's jump right into this video. So I didn't take a screenshot of the build size on the iPhone, but we did take it on the actual iPad itself. So if you guys can see, this is iPadOS 16.2 developer beta 4, and it was about 305.4 megabytes. And on the iPhone, this is the 13 Pro Max, it was about 550 megabytes. So give yourself about one total gig of space to make sure you have enough room to get this installed correctly before you actually get this installed. And then what I wanna do is actually show you guys the build number. So if we go into our settings, we go into general, we go into about, and we go into iOS version 16.2, here's the first thing that you actually notice that's new. So Apple continuously updates the actual information of what iOS and iPadOS version you're on. So before we used to only get iOS 16.2 and then the actual naming moniker, which in this case is 20C5058D, which again means that we should be getting closer to the RC edition and then the final public release. Apple normally around this time is closer to version B and version A because that last letter right there, that lowercase d, is what should be going down in quote unquote value down to A and then eventually getting into the RC edition. This late into the game, Apple normally is a little bit closer, but as you guys can see, we are on letter D, but Apple's also been known to skip letters as well, so we could be closer than we think because Apple should be releasing 16.2 to the public before the end of this year, ideally in early December. But you can see here that we also get a little bit more information on what was changed. So this beta version of 16.2 contains bug fixes and improvements. This beta version of iOS should only be deployed on devices dedicated for 16.2. I guess Apple is probably getting a little bit of heat especially with some earlier beta versions, which did ruin cell phone connectivity. So Apple's probably making sure like, hey, if you guys are in the beta program, make sure that you know that you're in a beta program and don't mess up your actual live phone. But then as you can see on the iPad over here, we get the same exact new view and we do have the same exact version number. And then we also did get a new modem update, which ideally should fix a lot of those cell phone connectivity issues. People have had issues, especially with AT&T towers with the 16.1.1 update. 16.1.2 did already release to the entire public, which should have fixed that. And then also with this beta 16.2 beta four, we should also get that same modem update and that same fix for whatever cell phone connectivity people were having issues with. I'm on T-Mobile, so I haven't had any issues, but people do have issues, especially with AT&T is what reports were saying. So again, like I mentioned, this is a beta four update, so there isn't gonna be a ton of new stuff. But one thing that I did notice was that the animations over here in the lock screen, for the notifications is actually a little bit different. It's almost a little bit slower in responsiveness. And also I did notice a little bit of a glitch, but it does feel like there's a little bit difference of a difference right there. So as you guys can see, as I move around, things start to kind of break up a little bit. That could be a case of the beta update, but keep that in mind, that is one thing that we did notice. And then also if we go into our settings and then go into accessibility, so let's go into accessibility, we actually got a new little icon right here for where it says control nearby devices. So that is new in this beta update. And then also if you have a series six Apple watch or higher, you are able to control your Apple watch with your iPhone with those newer Apple watches, which does show up right above the control nearby devices. Again, I have a series five, so I cannot show you guys that, but that also received a new icon in accessibility. Earlier this week, we did get a new quote unquote update, which was that B security response update. And it did install automatically for me. So if you guys aren't aware, Apple did release now a new way to update your software from a security standpoint. So we go into automatic updates. You do have the security response and system file section right here, which if you turn it on, will automatically update from a security standpoint, which is always great to have. And these updates have been very, very tiny. Normally a full software update is anywhere from half a gig to any, like, almost 10 gigs, depending on how big that changes. But these security updates have been relatively small at about three to five megabytes. And then from an overall usability standpoint and performance update, everything works pretty well. Everything is responsive. I haven't had any issues aside from the lock screen, which if I scroll down, like you saw, it's a little bit weird and wonky from occasion, but overall both the performance on the iPad OS side and the iOS side have been working extremely well and they are extremely stable. So I do recommend it if you guys want to jump on 16.2. And then from a performance standpoint, I do want to show you how extended monitor support is doing on the M series iPad. So let's change up the view real quick. And I'm gonna show you guys that because it has become extremely stable, which I love. Okay, everybody. So as you can see, again, we're using the M1 iPad Pro real quick, but you can see that this is working extremely quickly. Things are getting even more and more snappy as we start to get closer to a public release of extended monitor support coming back. Stage manager has been wonderful. Like I've had zero complaints as of late with 16.2 
and all this new feature. Because again, because I want the iPad to be a full computer and extended monitor support is one of those things that was really holding the iPad back for years and years. Like I said, I do wish that Apple would allow this to happen to more iPads, not just the M series iPads that start at $800 essentially. But overall, I'm just a big fan of what Stage Manager brings. It works extremely well. Another new thing that happened with this update is if I grab this, I can actually now drag it into the Stage Manager in the extended monitor support. I can grab this Twitter and bring it down here. Even though the size is big, it kind of readjusts its size, which is awesome to see. So more and more, this is becoming a computer and a computer replacement and a computer alternative, not just a supplemental device to your computer. I've been using the iPad as my computer for a very long time, and I'm just happy that it's slowly but surely making it making its way into becoming a computer. Again, I'm gonna do a whole video once this re-releases back out to the entire public to let you guys know everything that's new about it, everything that you are now able to do, but then also some smaller nuanced details that are kind of restrictive with iPad OS, Stage Manager, and Extended Monitor support. But let's check out the battery life and get out of this view. And then lastly, let's talk battery life. So let's go into our settings. Let's go all the way back into battery. So again, I am rocking a 13 Pro Max right here, not the 14 Pro Max, but I hear the 13 Pro Max battery is actually a little bit better than the 14 Pro Max. But as you guys can see, I'm getting about six hours and 40 minutes of screen on time, about three hours of screen off time. Here we go on a day like this, where we had 100% battery usage, about seven hours and 50 minutes of screen on time. A day like this, we had another 750. So overall, we're getting about seven to maybe nine hours of screen on time overall, which I'd like to see. So on a day like this, where we only use about 60%, 65% of our battery, we got six hours and 21 minutes of screen on time. That's a 10 hour, you know, full day. And I use this phone very, very heavily. And same thing with the iPad. Overall, the iPad battery life isn't amazing compared to the iPhone, because again, it's powering this crazy mini LED display and all that good stuff. But if we go down here into our battery settings, let it load up. You can see that over the last 10 days, so like on a day like this right here, we had six hours of screen on time with only about 25% charge. On a day like this, five hours, and 18, five hours and 18 minutes of screen on time. So overall battery life is improving. It just depends on what you're using it for overall. And again, a lot of the time I am plugged in. So overall, I am happy with the battery life of the M1 iPad Pro, which is, that's what this is right here. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this beta update. Let's change up the view and finish this video. So that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, things are just getting more and more stable. There weren't too many new tangible features. We had a couple new icons in there, but overall, this was a performance enhancement and bug fixing update. What I will say is that extended monitor support on the iPads has not been this stable ever. Now it's at definitely the most stable that it's ever been. So I'm just hoping that Apple is able to maybe bring it to more iPads, not just the M series iPads, so people can actually experience and use their iPad as a computer the way that we all want to. But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you guys did enjoy, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. And then also leave a comment down below if what you guys are excited for with a 16.2 update. Are you guys excited for Stage Manager, for extended monitor support? Are you guys excited for all the new features that came out on the iOS side? Let me know in the comments down below, but that's gonna do it, everybody. If you guys wanna watch more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, I'm out of here. Peace.